Okay. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Welcome in Salesforce Apex R. And today we are going to talk about Apex PMD. And today's speaker is Robert. Uh, so let me hand over to Robert for his introduction. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm Robert Zuseman. From my last name, you hear I'm from Germany. For me, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Sunny day in Germany. Yes, we will talk about um, my open source baby PMD and why it exists and what it should be for you. I will mostly demo stuff, show IDEs, show command lines. After a short round of introduction, um, I, will, I have some slides um, that I want to show you to, to start the topic, but I just want to begin to tell you a bit who I am and I don't want to make slides because you don't find me on PowerPoint, you find me online. That's why you see my Twitter account. So I'm R. Sozeman at on Twitter. I tweet a lot about Salesforce and quality and coding. I also work. <laughs> I'm working for a, a Salesforce partner um, called LogicLine. Um, you can connect with me also on LinkedIn, same, same handle. What am I doing as, as work? Um, my company logic line, um, is an, is a PDO partner, product development outsourcer. So we help companies to implement their product ideas in the app exchange. So we basically do ISV stuff on behalf of customers. Where do I have my experience from? Um, I, I'm in the Salesforce space since more than eight years. And the most of the time I was working for an American startup, which had many native products on the app exchange and in Salesforce. So this is where I get all my experience from. Um, you find me on Stack Exchange. <laughs> Most of the hard problems I actually don't solve myself. I let other people do. So you will see me around there. You also find me on, on GitHub. I have a few small open source projects online. But I want to talk about the biggest of those projects, which is PMD. PMD, everybody asks me what, what it actually means, what the acronym stands for. I don't know. Um, because I didn't invent it. PMD was, is an open source framework written in Java more than 15 years ago. Uh, a, a smart guy wanted a, a tool that checks Java code for potential problems and he wrote PMD. So the, I only took it into the Salesforce space um, because I was, in, in my previous job, I was, yeah, fighting some some code quality issues and i just want to switch to a presentation and it's just a few slides so i'm not hope i'm not going to bore you it's slides i took from my recent plural site course i did a plural site course with don robbins and lorenzo frattini and a, a guy who also has a great tool on code quality analysis which is called clayton um, and i want to start the slides in the opposite direction. I want to start with the, the last slide with the takeaways I want you to take from this, um, this, yeah, this webinar. Um, I don't, I, I actually don't care about tools. So even if we, if this is a tools talk, I think, um, you stay a fool if you just use a tool. So, um, what I want to convince you um, that code quality matters. Um, you all should care about that. Um, it's not important as a developer that you make it work. It matters that you make it good. It, I don't care or you shouldn't care about per, per being perfect, but um, code quality is, is, is important. Um, but as we are a computer science guy, we, we have to think about how to automate stuff and how to not solely rely on humans who think in quality matters. So you have to know your tools and understand their limitations. Um, 
while I'm only going to talk about PMD today, um, I will also tell you the full truth about what PMD is not able to do. So I'm not, I'm not selling PMD. I don't make any money with it, so I don't have to pimp it. <laughs> yeah, I will also um, tell you how to integrate PMD into your software development lifecycle. So I will show a little bit on integrating it with GitHub or Bitbucket, whatever. And yeah, and you should also take away um, that you should not be overwhelmed by anything that I say or show. Start small, iterate, get better. It, even the, the very the smallest thing you do towards a better code quality is, is good. So um, no matter how small it is. Okay, so let's go to the first slide. <laughs> um, it's about code quality. Um, a few years ago, I made a, I, I had a Dreamforce talk about PMD and code quality, and I said we all are super interested and hyped by getting things done. We love the Salesforce platform to, to really, because it's fast, we, we make the customer happy, but it's not only that. It's a code quality starts when you make your fellow developer happy or you make yourself happy in two years. So, so you should not just hack the code and make it work. You should care about code quality because that saves your life in a year. Code must be maintainable. It must be extendable because that's what we all want. We want agility. We want to get from version one to version two in, in short time. And we all know that this is not the reality of software developers because we have some challenges in code quality, which we just depicted here on this chart. We have, yes, we have a lack of expertise. There are many people coming into our um craft and they yeah they just learned how to program a single language but they didn't read about quality and clean code and all of that then if we have good people they often turn into different jobs so the, this, the most senior people they leave for the better gig so um, um experience often drains out of companies we Another problem or challenge is distributed teams. If people don't sit together and talk about code, um, there's often not a good uh, exchange of knowledge and um, distributed teams, they don't have shared ethics about how code should look like. Yes, we also have often big problems in the company culture because the most IT companies we all work for, they don't value quality. They just value money and being fast and telling the customer that we are the best company, which we often are not. Because I think software companies should, as at the first look at that they produce high quality stuff. Another problem is, um, I think many of you have heard about that. Um, if it's about quantity, people often agree. T 10 is 10, but if you say this is a nicer picture than this, people disagree. So when you talk about quality, and it's the same is true on software quality, um, it's not so easy. So um, what, what actually is so software quality? And I, I just want to say that um, as soon as you have a tool which checks software quality, this, this this discussion about objective and subjective uh, gets smaller. Yeah, and then we, we have pressing deadlines and we, we need to keep in, in, the, in the cost scope. So, um, right. So, I also want to show that image. Um, this, it's, it's basically showing you the, the, the costs of repairing software problems and the different stages of your development life cycle. This, this picture is like 100 years, now not 100, but 20 years old. The sooner to, to design and coding you fix problems, the better. If, if you wait until you release into production, it gets really costly. So um, you should definitely use all the tools, mechanisms, and methods that exist in our craft um, which help you to find problems early. Yes, 
we are going to talk about a tool which is in the category of code analysis. So a tool which looks for problems in codes, in code and finds stuff. And why should we use it? Yeah, we just saw it um, by, by checking our code for a meet. I always see it blinking here. Should I care about this? Could you just go on unmute and tell me? Yeah, you can go ahead. It's just chat window. I answer. Okay. It. Go ahead. Sorry. Maybe somebody was pinging me and telling me that my audio is not on. <laughs> no, no, we are good. If there is any issue, I will be stopping. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, um, decreased cost of repair. This is what I just talked about. What I slightly touched is market reputation. Um, we should not trust our guts that customers don't care about quality, that they just care about money and time. No, in the beginning, they just care about cost and time, but after a while, they really will value that you, that you produce quality code and that the stuff is, good, is tested very well and that you are able to change stuff really fast. Um, because this is this whole... 10 year old agility story about um, being fast to market is good, but when it takes 100 years to get out the next version because you have produced so crappy code in the beginning, it's also bad. So market reputation is also something which um, will get big if you care about code. And then we have something really very specific to the Salesforce world, which is um, the security review. As as, at, at least for those of you that work for ISVs or put code on the App Exchange, as soon as you have that, you you have made the experience that it's really bad when you are close to releasing your stuff, and then the guys from Security Review give you a document with 100 security issues. And the tools, the tool I'm talking about, PMD, but also all the other tools in the same space that exist out there. They put a high focus on helping you get through security review much faster. So let's see. I think that's that was it with my slides. So PMD. That's the tool that I'm talking about. Um, PMD is an open source project on GitHub. I'm I'm just opening the page and as you even see from the directory structure, it's a code analysis tool working for many languages. It started with Java, but it works on Fortran, on Dart, on C++, on Kotlin, on Go, all the new languages. And what I did um, in 2016 or 15 was contribute the Apex language module. Around that time, I was working in, in this product company and the team grew. We got a, many new people and we had a problem of how can we guarantee some, some coding standards. And I was working in the Java space before, so I thought, couldn't we, couldn't we have stuff like check style, uh, tools like, like we have in the Java space? And then I re recalled myself that PMD exists for Java and I knew Apex is, is some kind of Java. So to make a long story short, I, I got a ton of help from Salesforce and then I created PMD for Apex. So PMD for Apex is not the name of the open source library. I just contributed a part to PMD. So how do you start before I will show the tool, I will show you how to get it. PMD is a website. Google will tell you where it is. You just download the tool from the download button and then you get a, a zip file after a while. Let's see, it's 40 max big, so it, it should be there. You unzip it and then basically you're ready to go. So you don't need to install anything, it's just a bunch of jar files and a, a few scripts. 
good. I let's go back to the PMD page for a second. Um, the documentation is very good. It's not like many other um, open source projects. So they tell you exactly what to do. There is a documentation page which tells you exactly what you need. So I just want to show you. No, I don't want to show you that. I want to show you how how to run PMD. So I'm here, I, I've checked out um, a GitHub repo that you can also just download to reproduce what I'm going to show you. Um, let me just go back to that. On my, how do I get this smaller? Nah. I'm fighting a bit with getting this window away so I can switch my tabs. There it is. <laughs> so this is my GitHub page and there is an Apex PMD sample repository where I just added terrible code. <laughs> Um, so you can do the same and just try out what I did so so you exactly know what to expect. So I'm in this this repository. You see it's it's not a non-DX project. So if I go into the source folder, um you see the the classic um structure of a Salesforce pro project and I have PMD in a, in, a, in, a, in a folder and I can just call PMD from the command line. So what this command basically does is say, saying, please run PMD in the folder source classes. PMD is, is only running on Apex. So if you want to check Lightning components, Lightning CSS, JavaScript, there are other tools out there like ESLint or... So I tell him where to find code and then I tell him what to actually check for by giving him a rule set and I will show you exactly how this rule set looks later. <laughs> so I will just run PMD on this classes folder from the command line and after a bunch of debugging output, you see exactly that. It's, it's, it's showing you classes and there's a terrible one, which I called after the, the bad guy in Harry Potter, Voldemort. And then it's telling you, okay, in this class, in line number five, there is an, a problem with a rule called Apex unit test should not use see all data. And it's giving you the code. So that's that's basically it. You download PMD, you point it to a directory of, of Apex classes and run it. And then if I were you, I would say I don't want to work in, in CLIs and that's not helpful. So immediately I will show you how to do it differently. So but but PMD doesn't need installation, it's super easy and as you see, it's on the command line. That's why you can perfectly integrate PMD basically everywhere, into IDEs, into CI processes. But okay, let's go into everybody's favorite free Salesforce IDE, Visual Studio Code. Just as a plug, in my work, I use Intelligence IDE um, with Illuminated Cloud because I think it's still much better. But I want to stick with Visual Studio Code and just open it. So this is my folder that I just scanned. So you see we have a bunch of classes um, and we have some, some problematic classes. And the cool thing is you immediately see when I, when I open it in, in Visual Studio Code, I get those squiggly lines, which also tell me that something was reported by a PMD to not be right. And this, this doesn't work without an extension. There's a great extension, a free extension by 
a cool guy from the Salesforce Ohana called Charlie Jonas. He he made a PMD plugin. Um, you basically tell this plugin how to find your local PMD installation and then it works. So how do I get rid of this? Right. So, and when I go into any class, like this class, it's telling me that hard coding IDs is not good in Apex class, that it all comes back to a PMD rule. And to better understand that, you just re should recall what I entered even from the command line. Let's just go back to the command. I told him where to find a rule set and let me just open that rule set in my VS code. It's an XML file that you don't have to write many times. It, I know everybody hates XML. I, the same is true for me. The rule set is just telling PMD what to actually look for. In our case that we only care about Apex and so let me just do that. If you would take away this, go back here and run it, it wouldn't find anything because there's no rule in it. So let's see what, what we have in here. So we could do this. That's a simple rule set because it basically just references existing rules. It, say, it says, please check for all the design rules, performance rules, code style rules, best practice rules, error prone rules, and that's it. And that would be fully sufficient to, to run the rule and find a lot of problems. What I did, I even told PMD to do more. And that's the power of rule sets and I don't wanna dig very deep into that because that's something I will show you in the documentation. And to be honest, it's really easy. I always take the same rule set for all my repositories. So um, if you look into my open source, my other open source projects on GitHub, just go here to Apex Unified Logging, you will always find at the root the rule set XML and it, it basically every time looks the same. So, um, and, and talking about rule sets, my experience is that it will it somewhat shies away people, but it's just a configuration file. So in my rule set, I not only in, include all the existing rules, I also say um, I want to put much more priority on security rules, and I have some custom rules that I wrote myself. In the end of, of my monologue, I will also show you how to write your own custom rules and this is how custom rules look like. It's basically just a small XML node in your rule set. But, um, Amit, if you, if you hear me and can tell you how, how I can make this stop that this window is always coming down, then just tell me. <laughs> It is not visible to us. Oh, it's not visible to you. That, that's no. good. So I'm fighting with the Zoom toolbar, which is always hiding my, my browser tabs. So, but, but I can handle it. Yeah. So, if you want to understand which rules actually exist, you just go into the wonderful PMD documentation. And then for all the languages, you see a section. And we just care about Salesforce. And then you see we have different, we have an index of all rules. And then you see we have a few best practice rules, code style rules, design rules, error prone rules. And those rules are basically, um, yeah, self explaining even by the name. For example, let's just go into that, which is a very Salesforce specific rule a sharing violation. This rule is one of the first we added. It's telling you that you forgot to put a with or without sharing at the top of your class. So in the documentation, you always have a snippet that tells you what, what it is about and yeah, 
Another one is Sockle injection. So this is um, that you should name, you should use name credentials when you do an arrest call out. So this is basically what the security rules about are about. And we have, I will just skip over them. But what do we have? Yeah, we have best practices rules that you should not have logic in dot, dot trigger classes that you should always use in, in, in trigger handler framework, which moves all the code into to a class. You should avoid to use global because you cannot change more things about testing. We have code style rules, which will check that your class naming, your field naming, adheres to Java naming conventions so that that people who read your code actually recognize stuff more easy. How you use braces, all the stuff that you normally have to discuss with your fellow developer when you're doing pair programming. There's a PMD rule about it. Um, what else do we have? We have design rules. Um, if your classes have two a, a too complex structure like too many nested if else for loops then it's really hard to test so in the design category we we check that we have um a rule a category of rules which often leads to errors in in salesforce for example um yeah if if you hard code IDs or if you use annotations that don't work in Salesforce anymore. We also have performance rules, which, which often lead to you developer running into um, problems with governor limits. For example, if you have DML in loops, Sockle in loops. And then we have a bunch of security rules and if you ask yourself where all the rules come from, most of them I just ported from Java back then in 2015. But the security rules were even contributed by people who worked at Salesforce. So the, the rules here, they are really written by people from Salesforce. So you, in a way, you can trust them. Okay, so let's go back to our classes. So let's open a class which has some problems in it. Let's, let's go into this class. This class shows a typical error that I often see in code that people have an if or an else without opening and closing braces and that's really, really bad because the next developer could also say in case of else, I want to do a system debug, system debug, whatever, save it and everything is good, oops. And think this will only happen in the else case, but it does not, okay? So this is what we should do. And as we do this, the, the PMD, problem will go away. So, so this, so if, if somebody in the audience is, is a JavaScript developer, he knows linters. Linters are tools that help you while programming JavaScript. They immediately find problems or tell you what could lead to problems. And you can use PMD like this and you should do it. So all the major IDEs, even the, the ones that you should not use anymore, Eclipse and the force.com IDE, they have a free P PMD plugin. The same is true for Visual Studio Code. As you just saw it, the same is true for IntelliJ IDEA. I just, I just wanna open that because many of you might might use it and so when i said in the beginning that we should find problems as soon as possible then you shouldn't even commit problems into github i will in a minute show you how to find problems with pmd after checking in the code into your github but i also want to just show you how how pmd is is integrated into 
the IntelliJ IDE. Um, let me just open a project here. I have the PMD samples project also here. And then you do, you have to wait. Takes a while. And then you can run analysis, inspect code. It has many settings, but if, if you just care about PMD in, in the Salesforce space, there's a section here. You tell it where your PMD executable is. I think we have 16. You tell them where the rule set is. Then you click OK. And then you just run it. And after a while, oh, no suspicious code was fine. So I did something wrong here, but um, it would work like I showed you in Visual Studio Code. So the main message for you is that you can run PMD on the command line after a minute. You can run it in your IDE and be at Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ in two minutes. But let's go back to my slides. I want to show you, um, yeah, let's, let's shortly go on this slide. I just prepared it. So what does PMD help you in Salesforce? Um, it really can help you find security vulnerabilities, which are found by security review or by your customers. It helps you pinpoint performance bottlenecks with governor limits. It helps you find testing weaknesses. I, I just, you know, there is a rule which tells you that you should have an assert in your test, but also more complicated rules. If your, if your code, your Apex code is too complex and has too many different if else statements, you might not even cover all those different conditions and PMB has a rule which tells you exactly that. You can enforce coding standards if it's about how to name methods, where to put the braces, PMD is the right tool for that. By enforcing some, some best practices in Salesforce, it's enforcing um, coding practices and this is really what you need in bigger teams. So this was really helpful for me with PMD. Yeah, and um, we care about clean code and PMD, tells you if code is not clean. So if, if, if you don't adhere to coding practices, if it's too complex, it's not clean. Because clean code is easy, easy to test, easy to maintain, easy to read. So um, yeah, I wanna show you that sample workflow um, to, to do the next step. So we have seen the beginning where, where it says code. You, you can use PMD wherever you want. You can use in the command line in your ED, IDE. But what if a team developer doesn't do it, if he doesn't care about that? You also wanna enforce stuff. Quality is something people do because they like it, but you, you, in every team you also find people who don't care about this. So then you need a process and I will show you how to do it with PMD. We want to have a process where you put, push something into Git. And I just care about the, the upper branch of this image. You know that you can use continuous integration to do unit testing and stuff. But I just want to talk about the, the upper branch. And it says, I want to have PMD run on the code that was pushed to Git. Why do I want that? Because that's the only way I can enforce that all the rules are run. And if you look at the next step in our diagram, I don't want to waste precious developer time during the code review that is done by people. Because that's one of the experiences I had in the past. If you don't have tools like PMD, 
the, the code review you do on pull requests, you only will talk about naming conventions, about braces, about Salesforce best practices. And actually, that's, that's a waste of people's time if a tool can do it. If you have a process like I show here, you will, you will see that you have more time to talk about the stuff tools cannot find. Tools cannot find out if a, if a method or a class is, is well structured or, or if names are good. So, um, okay, how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you a tool called Codacy. Let's go back to my report. No, yeah, let's go here. On all my projects, be it my, my public open source projects or all the projects in the company that I work for, for every project you see su such a code quality thing. Okay, now he, this one, this project has a B. It's better if it has an A. <laughs> oh, it's also B. So I should care more about quality in my project. But this has a C, and this is the project you just saw, the, the one which just have problematic classes. And how does that little, little button appear? It's embedded by a tool called Codacy. Codacy is a company in Europe, in, in, in Lisbon, in, in um, is it Spain or Portugal? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm bad at that. So, and Codacy is basically connecting to your GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever you have. All your versioning systems connect to Codacy. And if you have open source public repositories like I do, it's even free for you. Codacy makes money by, by doing that, but if it's open source, it's free. And what you see here, it's the dashboard of this project with bad code. And you see how that is helpful in a way which P running PMD in your IDE does not. It's trending the quality over time. It's telling you, oh, you, you have many security problems. It's telling you immediately where your code has problems, so the hotspots. If I go here into the commit, you see, oh, I made many bad commits. You see a person added problems or fixed problems. If you click on files, you see how many problems you and, and which grade each file has. And then, sure, you have a, a list of all the issues. And you see, OK, this class has an empty log statement. Not a big problem, but, but still something which you should avoid. Or here, let's just drill into this avoid hard coding IDs. So you see the snippet of the problem. You see why the problem exists. So you get a very good, it's basically extracting the PMD documentation. How does Codacy do that? When you, when you log into Codacy, it asks you which of your Git repositories or Bitbucket repositories it should connect, and then it immediately gets the code and runs different open source code checkers on it. And this is what you, what you find here. I need to log into Codacy to, to show you that. Um, there is an option called code patterns and i need to go to a different project um, to show you more engines so codacy is not pmd specific codacy takes engines and linters of all available languages like javascript and css and java and basically integrates them into the UI. So I, what, for, for this project, I'm just saying I want PMD. So it's, it's toggled on. It's, it's taking all the rules from my rule set, but I could also tell Codacy, ah, I just care about some specific Apex rules. So Codacy basically is a beautiful UI on top of 
of open source engines. That's, that's also a reason why I promote them so much. I don't get money from them, but they highly respect open source tools, which other companies like Sonar don't do. So if you are a Sonar user, I can just tell you integrating PMD currently doesn't work, even if they tell you the, the opposite. So first look at Codacy. Um, yeah, that's, that's how you integrate it. And the cool, how, how does it work? Um, there's a setting and you basically tell Codacy that um, if a pull request or a commit has more than X issues, it should just be stopped. And this is how, how we introduce quality and how you should also do it um, if you want to make it part of your development pipeline. If somebody pushes something into GitHub or um, adds a pull request, Codacy monitors that, runs PMD and other engines on it, and then basically stops the pull request. And this guarantees that all the rules that you as a team or you as an architect decided on are enforced. And you are also sure that when somebody makes his pull request work and goes into the manual peer review, you, you don't have to discuss all the nifty detailed problems about braces and stuff. Okay, I want to come to an end. I just want to tell you where to find more. No, I actually don't want to come to an end. I just want to show you something more. How to add rules. Before you think about adding rules, please take the time and check all the existing rules. Um, you can, there is, there is parameters for every rule. So um, let's, let's just go to the rule set back. Um, you can deactivate rules. You can tell PMD to, to change certain properties. Maybe I should do it here. Um, some of the rules, they have um, properties which you can change. For example, um, let me show you this design rule. There's a rule which says um, too many fields, um, and, but that's highly subjective. Is a class really only bad when it has more than 15 inner uh, fields? You can change that, and you can change that in the rule set. Okay, so first you should... Um, live with the existing rules. If that doesn't help you, please go to the PMD open source repository and just create an issue. Let's just look for the open Apex issues. Yeah, there's, some, there's just a person who not only asked for a new rule, but even Edit is as a as a as a pull request, which I love. So I want you to finally become contributors to PMD. But this person was adding a Java rule, wrote a Java rule, and committed it to enforce debug statement best practices. And I just want to go. I just want to show you some code. Um, what this person actually wanted to have. Let's just look at this small class that you see here. We all know that system debugs can be helpful even in production code. So when there's a try catch and you, you want to have something in the logs so you can help your customer, something like this is fully okay. A system debug with logging level error and then putting something in the logs, that's okay. What is not okay if in production code our fellow developers forgets to remove his system debug, what the heck is going on here? I'm currently debugging this. And to find problems like this, you actually don't need to contribute anything to PMD. You could just write your own rule and you need a tool for that, which comes with PMD when you download it. It's called, let me just clear my console. It's called a designer. It's called PMD designer. It's a Java UI tool, which helps you um, create rules. And 
if I say rules, I need to tell you that rules can be implemented either using Java code, which is in a way complicated. I don't want to cover that. Um, I will tell you where to learn more. But you can also just add um, a small snippet of XPath to your, to your rule set. Let me just show you that. Um, I just need to make this a little bit smaller. This node in my rule set, this is implementing what we just, oops, sorry about that, what we just talked about. It's the avoid production debug logs rule. And there's a lot of XML noise, which, which you actually should not care about. The only important thing is that. It looks cryptic, but um, it's, it's an expression which in Apex finds exactly the problem we are talking about. And how do, I, how do I come to this expression using the designer? So the designer helps you create not only Apex PMD rules, but also Java rules. So um, let's just switch to Apex. And um, here you just see the code that I was talking about. It's a class with two methods. The one shows an absolutely okay use of um, a system debug and the other one is not okay and then you see this this complicated tree here and this is how PMD internally works it's it's taking the source code PMD is working on the source, source code that's why it often is called static code anal analyzer it's not looking at how code dynamically runs it just looks into how it statically looks and um, there, I have a slide about that um, I want to show you that PMD is basically taking the, the left side Apex statement and creating such an abstract syntax tree. It's called AST. It's something from parsers. And this is the structure that PMD is, is, is getting out of your source code. So it, it sees there is a return statement, there's a while statement, the while statement has a condition. And you know, this, this basically is a tree. It's a tree of the syntax of the class and PMD is exactly using that. And if you, if you think about it, an XML document is also a tree. And what's the language to query to find XML nodes in an XML document? It's XPath. So that's what the designer is doing. It's, you put in some, some Apex code, you see the AST for it, and then you can write an, an XPath expression. And I already have the perfect one. So you see this XPath expression only finds this second debug. So what, what is it doing? It's looking for method call expressions like debug, it's checking that the name of the method is system debug. And then I just say, I really, all the debug statements which have a, a debugging level defined must be, the developer must have thought about this. So I just wanna accept them, but all the other ones I wanna find. So if I just remove that, you see it's going to, it's, it's finding both this and the other one. So writing rules is really super simple. Use the designer, paste in your Apex code, learn about how the AST looks like and then play around. And then after that, take your rule set and add such a, such a small rule block. And if it's working for you, why not just contribute that, uh, that rule? Okay. I really want to come to an end um, because I want to leave time for questions. I just want to point you to some resources. Um, if, you, if you look for PMD in the press on Google, there is a page where I collected some of the stuff that I did in the recent years, some webinars and some podcasts. And the most helpful for you, if you want to learn more about PMD, especially 
if you want to learn more about PMD stuff that I didn't talk about, like what other tools exist in the market. Um, there exist tools that cost money and can do more things like PMD. Um, if you want to also hear about Java rules, then I highly recommend you to go to Pluralsight, which is a great learning platform. Um, and the guy on the left, Don Robbins, is doing webinars, and I was just invited to do one about PMD. And this course is just made free so pluralsight you normally you pay money for that but the pmd course um is free and it's two and a half hours long so you can learn much more you can see much more demos and i highly recommend you to do it um amit will also share the links um in the notes of this apex hours so wow 50 minutes that was a very long monologue amit i i hope we we have some questions yeah, thank you so much, uh, Robert, for the great session. And I can see one question, which is the best option, PMD or Clinton? So would you like to answer for this? And definitely, I guess, like for both of them, we can compare in this particular recording as well. But uh, if you can answer, that will be really great. Well, can you can you repeat the question? What is the best option, PMD or Clinton? Clayton? Yeah. Clayton, okay. Okay, I mean, the, the, the guy you see on the picture, Lorenzo to the right of me, the, um, he's the founder of Clayton and um, it's a great tool, but I sit here to promote, the, to mode, to promote PMD, which is open source. Um, so I will not answer that way in a, in a really objective way, but um, I can tell you, watch this video. Clayton is costs money so and it's if you want to start small you might not be willing to to pay for it um if you are willing to pay for it um in some situations clayton will do a better job for you you will not have to configure that much you it's not an open source project you don't have to play around with rule sets it has a nice ui but it doesn't work locally so what I showed you with PMD that you can integrate it in, in, in all of the IDEs that you can use it in your CLI. Clayton cannot do it. Clayton is a tool which runs like codacy on the cloud in GitHub. So um, it's something you have to check for yourself. Um, I can I can say that Clayton is doing much better on some nifty issues because PMD is really just looking at 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 one file source code, but Clayton understands more how classes um, hang together, how the engine is smarter because Clayton is just made for Salesforce. So um, I would look at both, but I I, I would make a Bet in the beginning, when you want to start small, you should start with PMD. Right. I don't want to say more. I, I, maybe I can just turn on the video. <laughs> I just want to show the people that I, I wear a Clayton t-shirt because I really think Clayton is a very good solution. <laughs> you have to look at everything. You have to that's that's also something i should say pmd doesn't work with github alone that's why i promote codacy as a company so i would say pmd with codacy gives you the full coverage you have it in the ide and you have it you have it um, in github clayton is not in the ide it's only in github and bitbucket and everywhere but there's no competition. And the person who asked this question, you need to find this out on your own. Okay. <laughs> I stay online. Anybody have any other question? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay. Everyone is silent means we are good. <laughs>